Hey guys, this is Avoided, and today I'm going to show you an awesome trick with the 4-bit ribbon cable. So first of all, I can't take credit for this. Someone on Brothgar's Oxygen Not Included subreddit showed it to me. Um, their username is a bit strange, but it is... Their username is a squared 31415 Ah, I just figured out that's a squared pi. I originally showed them a video where I had built a time division signal multiplexer and they correctly pointed out that you can in fact do multiplexing with just the vanilla components. So today I'm going to show you how to do that. So just as a quick introduction, I'm just going to describe how the ribbon cable works and what we're even trying to achieve. So the ribbon cable has two parts that you use with it, the ribbon writer and the ribbon reader, and they do obviously what they're called. So the writer writes bits onto the ribbon and the ribbon reader reads the bits from the ribbon. So a traditional automation wire you can think of as a single bit uh, signal, so it's either on or off. And if you were to put a group of them together, you might say this was three bits. So the first bit could be on, the second bit could be off, and the third bit could be on. The automation ribbon is simply four of these connected together. So what we're trying to do is to include more than four signals on one ribbon. And this is actually pretty trivial and quite exciting for me because there are quite a few designs that I've been using where the limitation of four bits has actually been a problem. So first of all, let's describe how the ribbon writer and ribbon reader actually work. Um, on the ribbon writer, you describe which bit it writes to, and then you describe the same thing on the reader. So in this example, both of the reader and the writer are set to bit number one, and you can see that if I turn on the light, the light goes on. If I set this to bit number two, you'll see the second bit on the cable is illuminated and only if we were to set the reader to bit number two would the light go on. Interestingly, the way that the ribbon writer and the ribbon reader are built is that they are actually just bit shifts. So what they do is they take an input and then they move the values. So if you were to put a ribbon writer with a ribbon as its input and set it to, for example, write bit number one, then what that means is that it would shift the signal zero bits along. If you were to set it to bit number two, the signal would be shifted one bit along. So you can see how what was previously, let's just add another copy of the slide to demonstrate what I mean. What was previously a signal written to say bit number one will now affect bit number two. What's on bit number two will affect bit number three once it's traveled through the writer. And the really exciting part is that we can actually push bits beyond the last bit of the ribbon cable. So what that means is we can do something like this. We can say bit number three to push it two along. So now you can see, for example, bit number one has become bit number, uh, sorry, bit number two has become bit number four. And we can chain two of these writers together. And we can set them each to be bit number two. And now what's happening is that the green uh, bit, the bit that's active, has been shifted past the fourth bit, but it's still there. So if we were to take a reader, which does the opposite, and chain them together, and set them to the correct values, in this case, let's shift it back by two bits, we will now see that we get our green wire back. What this allows is for us to include more than four signals on one cable, and I'm going to demonstrate how that is possible. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to control two different panels. So let's use the pixel packs to demonstrate this. Two different pixel packs with only one cable. So here's the cable that we're going to use to transfer the signal from our source to the destination. Okay, so now that we understand that we can take a ribbon cable, put a signal on it, and then use a reader or a writer to shift the bits in the cable, what we can do is we can take two different ribbon cables, put signals onto them using the normal writers, and then combine them into one ribbon cable using what would be a writer set to bit to, to shift four bits over. So because we can't do that, we use two writers and we set them each to bit number three. And so what we can do then is we've essentially got an eight bit ribbon cable where the first four bits are this bottom set of switches and they're controlling this bottom pix pixel pack. So if we run the simulation, you can see I can toggle the bottom pixel pack on and off. But we've also using essentially wire number five through wire number eight to control the top pixel pack. And so to convert those back into a normal ribbon cable signal, we use the reader. And in this case, we use two readers to shift it left or, or towards the least significant bit by four bits 
and we can therefore control both of these pixel packs with only one central ribbon cable transferring the signal. I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you can think of a cool use in your actual colony, that would be amazing. Please leave a comment if you use this. Um, an example of something that I want to use it for is, if you see my other video, I've built a logistics system whereby you dispatch ingredients to, for example, a kitchen or a dining room. And there are more than four different food types in the game. So I'm planning on using this to be able to dispatch any of the different foods in the game to where they're needed, but transmitting that information only one over a single ribbon cable.